Oh, you crack me up. You have to tell me the rest of that story when uh, when we have time. Um, oh, hello. Welcome to another installment of The Modern Playbook. Uh, this is where we'll be doing short segments on some of the comics you should be looking out for as a modern collector, as a speculator, as a reader of, um, of the comic book form. Um, as always, I think bourbon and comics go perfectly together. But I'm going to be trying something today uh, that I'm calling Drawing to Your Attention. And essentially, I'll be highlighting covers that I think uh, may not be out in the general uh, populace. Uh, they're not on radars, uh, but they may heat up down the line. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the great Mike Morello, who does a weekly column called Cover Tunes, uh, where he highlights a lot of great covers. Um, and again, there are so many spectacular covers beyond variant covers that I think there can be more than one sort of segment dedicated to that. So I wanted to uh, share five tonight and uh, explain my reasoning behind each. Uh, first one is... Uh, the Books of Doom. This is by uh, Paolo Rivera. Uh, he is one of the consummate cover artists in the business. Uh, some of his Daredevil uh, run back when I think uh, Wade was writing. Uh, phenomenal covers. But uh, I think Doctor Doom, of course, is one of those villains who has not yet been fully brought to um, full potential in the Marvel uh, in the Marvel universe proper in terms of film. Uh, I think this is just a classic cover of him sort of sitting, sitting upon his throne, looking imperious. Uh, there are about 34,000 of these, I think, uh, when this was published in, um, I want to say, uh, 2005? Uh, probably. Uh, but anyway, one to be on the lookout for. You could find these whole runs. It was a, uh, it was a six issue limited series. I love the first issue, uh. Just because, you know, it's Doom, it's a first issue. You know, you're not going to chase Dr. Doom's first appearance, so start looking at some of those covers that may pop. That's a beautiful, regular cover. Uh, another one that I hold particularly close to my heart, um, I know everyone knows The, uh, the Amazing Spider-Man, uh, the 9-11 tribute cover that is rightfully... Uh, you know, collected and put away in collections. But this is one in my personal collection that I uh, that I bought. Uh, and believe it or not, when I, I went, I had to go back and look it up and see when it came out. And this came out in um, September 17th in uh, 1991. So almost 10 years to the day um, of the uh, of the 9-11 terrorism attack of the Twin Towers. As a New Yorker, as someone who witnessed it firsthand from, you know, from across the way in Brooklyn, um, this cover, is just sort of like beautiful. Uh, it's Martian Manhunter looking contemplative out of the Twin Towers. Uh, again, if you're a New Yorker, it'll hold a special place in your heart. But of course, if you were just like an American at that time, um, and just 10 years to the day, it was sort of eerie. Uh, so Justice League uh, 56, Justice League America 56 from the great Giffen to Mathis run, uh, but a cover worth, worth having in your collection. Cover that had heated up for a while. I think there had been rumors of a sort of a Spider-Man Deadpool team up and uh, this has come back down to earth a little bit and you can still find these um, in collections because I, I think a lot of people go for the later issues in the Cable and Deadpool run but uh, this is of course Cable and Deadpool 24 uh, this is a Patrick Zercher cover uh, Spidey Deadpool uh, fighting it out uh, who knows what the future will bring in terms of um, interactions crossovers um, within these characters, but as I've said, I think the Disney plus um, the fluidity between both small screen and large screen, if we ever get back to large screens, right? Uh, maybe everything will be small screen from now on. Uh, we'll see these characters cross over eventually. This is a first meeting between Spider-Man and Deadpool, Cable and Deadpool, um, 24, regular cover, Zercher. Uh, I remember watching the uh, the last Avengers, uh, last last in the trilogy, uh, watching Endgame, and they had that scene that a lot of people were upset about, where you know they had all the women come together, and like there were guys like, oh, that's corny, that would never happen. But as someone who has a daughter and um, someone who has seen these like strong young female characters, especially starting to rise to the forefront um, in collecting, let me finish that thought. 
Um, I I really like the uh, the Hulk nine cover. I actually thought this was a variant because I mean it's a, it's a great cover. Um, this features She Hulk and the Lady Liberators. So you have um, Thundra, Storm, Black Widow, Sue Storm, Spider Woman, Hellcat, Valkyrie, and Tigra. Um, and then you have She-Hulk standing on the neck, of course, of uh, the Red Hulk. Red Hulk spec getting a lot of play as well. Thinking again about these MCU books. This is Hulk 9. Beautiful cover. Still uh, still available on the cheap, but, you know, Art Adams is just the king of doing these multi-double page spreads across covers. So, you know, when you look at how he portrays his characters and just She-Hulk's sort of boot on his neck, I mean... How can you not want that? Uh, final one is, I'll always want to highlight an artist who I think uh, is underappreciated. Uh, a lot of, of this artist particular, uh, he had such a, a great run um, on this book. Uh, he wasn't paired with the best writer uh, at the time. Um, Peter David, to me, is a seminal Hulk run. But uh, when Fabian uh, Nicieza, uh, probably, uh, I think Brazilian writer, uh, working with uh, Kyle Holtz, and um, this is The Incredible Hulk 29. And for me, this is just a phenomenal Hulk cover. Just the, the musculature um, stylings. Uh, and then Nightmare, uh, someone we've heard maybe could pop up in uh, maybe Doctor Strange, Multitude of Madness. Beautiful cover. Uh, again, something you could find in the $3, like, you know, $3 range around that time. Gorgeous cover. Not everything has to be a variant to be beautiful. Um, drawing your attention to covers that may fall under your radar. Incredible Hulk 29. Um, this is Gary Nusser, Comic Perspective.